are now looking at some ligaments of the lower limb, starting with the hip. Here we've got an anterior view of a right hip model. We can see an anterior superior iliac spine here. We can see an iliac fossa here, an iliac crest here at the top. Pubis at the front and ischium towards the back there. And here we've got the, the anterior surface of the femur. Now, looking at the, at the hip joint then, we can see there's a few large ligaments here. Now, these ligaments are thickenings of the joint capsule. So they're external. You can see them on a specimen, but they're not quite as clear in where they start and finish. They all blend together on the, on the specimens. But on this model, it's really quite clear. You can see that these two bands here are attaching from the ilium. So these two bands are the iliofemoral ligaments. So please remember there are two. One's on the superior aspect of the joint coming over to the greater trochanter. The other is on the anterior aspect of the joint coming to the intertrochanteric line. So those two, iliofemoral, they're the ones that used to be called the Y ligament of Bigelow because of that, um, the two prongs there that you can see, like the letter Y. So then inferior to them, but still visible from an anterior point of view, we have the pubofemoral ligament. And you can see that this part of the bone here, this part of the hip bone, is part of the pubis. This is the superior ramus of the pubis here. And so this part is part of the pubis as well. So these fibers here will be pubofemoral ligament. They're clearly visible also from an inferior point of view. Okay, so that's pubofemoral. And then from a posterior point of view, if we turn the hip around, here we can see the body of the ischium with the ischial spine and ischial tuberosity there. Here we can see the ischiofemoral ligament. So on the back is ischiofemoral ligament there. Now remember these, those three ligaments, they're part of the joint capsule and they're fairly superficial parts of the joint capsule. What we've got also on the list for today though is something called the orbicular zone. Now the orbicular zone is deep fibres of the hip joint capsule. So they're fibres you won't see on a specimen but they have put them on this model so we can see them. Now when we looked at those ligaments hopefully you noticed I'm not sure if how well you can see the direction of the fibres there, but the direction of the fibres on all the iliofemoral, pubofemoral and ischiofemoral ligaments are all kind of running along the neck. They run in pretty much the same direction as the neck of the femur is running. These fibres in here are deep fibres of the capsule and they run around the neck. Now let's zoom in and have a look at the fibre direction. So here we can see iliofemoral fibres running along, more or less, along the, the same direction as the neck of the femur travels. These fibres here, though, are travelling around the neck. So this is the orbicular zone. Orbicular as in orbiting something, going around something. So these are deep fibres of the capsule. So they're not fibres you'll see on a specimen, but fortunately we can clearly see them on this model. So here they are in between the iliofemoral ligament bands, you can just make them out here between the iliofemoral and pubofemoral ligaments, but not as clearly. And then posteriorly, here they are here, just inferior to the ischiofemoral ligament there. So that's the orbicular zone. They're deep fibres of the capsule, and that's partly what makes the hip joint capsule so strong, is that it has fibres running in a couple of different directions, which, which makes it a lot stronger than a lot of joint capsules, which predominantly have fibres running only in one direction. So that's the orbicular zone. And then we can also look at another structure that's not a ligament, but we can clearly see it from this posterior point of view. Here we've got the head of the femur, and here we've got the rim of the acetabulum just under here. So this structure here is the acetabular labrum. Remember, labrum means lip, so that's a lip of fibrocartilage that's running around the rim of the acetabulum and this one's big. There's one in the glenohumeral joint as well, which is quite small, but this one's really quite large. Okay, quite a big structure. So that's what they're indicating here on the model. That's the, the um, acetabular labrum. Now you can see it again here, just inferior to the ischiofemoral ligament, and you can see it, a small part of it here anteriorly, 
in between the pubo and iliofemoral ligaments there. So it runs right around the rim of the acetabulum. But there is one part that it doesn't go right around, and that's the acetabular notch. Now, the acetabular notch we can see here. Well, we, we could, except that there's something filling up the notch. So the notch would be just here, seen from an inferior point of view. But this structure here is the transverse acetabular ligament. And that sits in the acetabular notch. Okay? Fills up that notch. And you can see the labrum coming here, coming in and kind of blending, joining with the transverse acetabular ligament. So those two structures are continuous. So here's the ligament. Here's the labrum here, seen from an inferior point of view. Now we do have fortunately another model where you can also see the transverse acetabular ligament. So we have a quick look at a full pelvis here with ligaments shown. So we've got uh, an anterior view. So this would be the right hip, the iliac fossa here. Here we've got L5 and then the sacrum. Pubic symphysis here at the front. So if we look at the acetabulum here, here we've got the hip joint socket. You can see part of it's covered with cartilage, part of it isn't. And here in the notch, on the inferior aspect, here's the transverse acetabular ligament. So that's it there. Same structure, just a diff slightly different view. There isn't an acetabular labrum on here, but if there was, it would be sitting on this rim of the acetabulum around here, and it would be quite a large fibrocartilaginous lip. So that, and also seen on this side, is the transverse acetabular ligament. Okay, now on to the knee next. And there's quite a few structures to look at on the knee, but it's really fascinating. Here we've got an anterior view of a right knee model. And we're looking, so we're looking at femur up here. The patella is here underneath these fibres on the anterior aspect. You can see the patella ligament here at the front attaching distally to the tibial tuberosity and coming proximally from the apex of the patella. That's just about visible through the fibres there. Um, again, we have collateral ligaments either side, like we have with a lot of joints of the body. This time, on the lateral side, and we can be certain that it's lateral, because here's the fibula. Here we have the fibula collateral ligament. Now, it's, very, it's quite thin and cord-like. On specimens, it probably will be even thinner and more cord-like than this. Um, and less kind of flat, uh, as it is here in this model. And then on the medial side, we have the tibial collateral ligament. Now, that one is quite broad. It's a big, strong, broad ligament, like it's shown on the model here. Now, also from an anterior point of view, then, we can see the menisci. Now, we again check that you know which side you're on before you write down which one you think it is, but this one must be the lateral meniscus, because here's the fibula. This one must be the medial meniscus because there's no fibula here, we've just got tibia, so that must be the medial aspect. Now let's have another um, a look at a different view of the menisci if we just gently dislocate the joint and flex so that we can see the menisci from a superior point of view. Here's the lateral meniscus. Notice that it's quite small, makes almost makes a circle. The medial meniscus, on the other hand, is a bit bigger bit larger in diameter and doesn't um, kind of curl up as much. It's a bit less concave there. Um, doesn't almost make a circle. Notice too that the menisci are quite thin here on the inner part and then quite thick or tall out here on the lateral side. So they're kind of wedge shaped if you look at them from that point of view. And they're thin here in the middle and large here on the outside. So they're the menisci, lateral and medial menisci there. And while we've got the joint open like this, we can also clearly see the cruciate ligaments. So here's the anterior cruciate ligament here. Remember that the cruciate ligaments are named for their attachment to the tibia. So the anterior cruciate is anterior on the tibia here, but then it actually goes posteriorly, and it's quite posterior in its attachment to the femur. So remember, they're named for their attachment to the tibia. Now, from this anterior point of view, we can also see the posterior cruciate. There it is there. But we can't see all of it. But if we uh, extend the joint 
and then turn it around, have a look at a posterior point of view. Here we've got a posterior cruciate ligament. We can see the whole thing there. And notice that it's posterior in its attachment on the tibia, and then it moves anteriorly from there to attach to the femur. And here we can see part of the anterior cruciate where it's come right through to the posterior aspect of the lateral femur here. This one's not, not considered part of the posterior cruciate, so it's just this big one here. Okay, and that's all we actually need for the knee there. So we'll have a look now at the foot. So here we've got a few ligaments of the uh, ankle and foot region to have a look at. We're looking at a right foot here. So firstly, that's a medial point of view. And we'll just zoom in a bit to get a, a closer look. So here we've got an anterior view of the right ankle region. We've got tibia, fibula, talus here. So that's what we're seeing there. And firstly, here's our anterior tibio-fibula ligament. So running from the tibia to the fibula, holding them together. And there'll be a posterior one. Now the posterior one in some ways is a little more tricky only because well this is it here running between the tibia and fibula so that bit's easy but there are some other structures here that are not ones that you need to know so here we have a couple of tendons and they're being held in place by this structure here which is a retinaculum now a retinaculum holds tendons in place basically there's a few of them around the body you don't need to know this one for now okay jo i just want you to know though that it's not one of the tibio fibular ligaments. These are fibres here of the posterior tibiofibular ligament. There will be more fibres under this retinaculum, but the retinaculum is not part of the ligament. This structure here is a different ligament that you don't need to know. This one we'll come back to in a sec. That is one that you do need to know. So these fibres here, posterior tibiofibular ligament. Now if we come back to an anterior point of view, we can see another ligament here which is the anterior talofibular ligament so here we have the talus here we have the fibula the lateral malleolus so these fibers here anterior talofibular ligament now this is the one that's the most commonly sprained and strained ligament in the body and if you the uh, the little toe out here uh, if, if you sprain your foot and your little toe heads this way uh, and so the, so the foot uh, turns, so the plantar surface is facing medially, but the tibia and fibula remain fairly vertical. This part of the talus here is going to disappear downwards, and this ligament gets torn. So that's the anterior talofibular ligament. Now, because there's an anterior one, there must be a posterior one. It's a little bit trickier, I, I guess, to see clearly here what's where this ligament is attaching, but this is the posterior talofibular ligament. It's coming from, again, the lateral malleolus of the fibula. And this part of the, well, this bone here is the talus. So we've got tibia, talus, and calcaneus. So this is talus. So this ligament is going from the fibula over to the talus. So that's your posterior talofibular ligament. It's only small. So the two you need to know on the back here posterior tibiofibula, posterior talofibula. And then we have the calcaneofibula. So we're looking at a lateral point of view here. Here's the calcaneus. Here's the calcaneofibular ligament. And again, it's partly hidden by a retinaculum and partly hidden by a couple of tendons. So that's calcaneofibula. And we can see it again here, fibres of it coming up and attaching to the lateral malleolus. So this is calcaneofibular ligament here and here, but these structures are not part of it. So if you're looking at a specimen where these tendons and the retinaculum has, have been removed, you'll be able to see all of the calcaneofibular ligament there quite clearly. Okay, now the good news is on the medial side. So if we turn the foot around and have a look from a medial point of view, we could see calcaneus, part of the talus, tibia here, 
medial malleolus of the tibia. All these fibres here that come from the medial malleolus and attach to the tarsals distally are all part of the medial ligament of the ankle. Now there are, as, as you can see on this model, there are actually four parts of it, but you don't need to know them just for now. Now, if any part of this is pinned, that's all medial ligament 